The disrespect was from Vegas. Yes. So beside that, Alex Martinez is back. Nolan Patrick is the new face. So it was Evgeny Dodonov. No centerman, which is like weird. They have sort of have sort of must have this internal thing. So the big story is they they got rid of Mark Andre Fleury for nothing. Nothing. Like this this depth. What's the forward's name again? Like Mikel Hakarainen or something. Yeah. Michael Hakarainen. He's probably- he like a fourth round pick a few years ago. And they traded him for the reigning Vesna Trophy winner, who was apparently so upset he may retire. So yeah. he found out via Twitter, too, which is pretty bad. Apparently he knew there were discussions, but it was broken to him on Twitter, which if you think about it, the Twitter guys knew before Flurry did. The yeah. social media people knew because they were doing that dumb eye emoji. The replies to those tweets, by the way, are I love how people are calling Chicago out. Anyway, I, I feel like... I would be doing an injustice to this podcast if I did not first ask Daniel, how do you feel about the Vegas Golden Knights completely disrespecting Mark andre Fleury? My boy. What did they do to my boy? It happens again. Like, I don't understand why. I, I, I don't know. Like, it's just, it's, I don't know what Vegas is trying to do with this because it is a lot of the things where a lot of reports talked about, like James Brown talked about it too, where just the way that, management has kind of treated players there and the way that you treat someone like Margo J. Fleury, where like, honestly, where he ever, he has gone, it's been all class where he is a guy that even if he retires now, he's going to be in the hall of fame. He is a winner. He is someone that I, I think Vegas, they just, they gave up on him. Like I know he had a bit of those blunders in the playoffs, but again, you can't win if you can't score. And they were bad. Like, like we talk about the center depth that that team has or does not have like that lack of center depth. And then in addition to that, you also have your wingers underperforming. So I think that it was a whole team effort, kind of like a lack of team effort that was not there. And then to do this to flurry, man, like really like the guy gave it his all, like he waved his no trade clause to go there. He was talking, like he was the biggest guy that I think that he was a major selling point for them that, he was a proven star that wanted to stay in Vegas long term. He's the franchise. He is. Alex, I'm, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go last here. Alex, how do you feel about this whole situation? Oh, I think the, the him finding out on Twitter is extremely disrespectful. Like, I'm just, I'm beyond how do you, how does that happen? How do you, how do you let that, how do you let that happen? I guess is the question I'd have to go and ask. If I could talk to George McPhee and Kelly McCrimmon, I'd say, how do you let that happen? Uh, I, it's just beyond me and extremely disrespectful. I, I think the trade itself was in my eyes, inevitable. I think when they committed five years to Robin Leonard last summer and tried to trade Mark Andre Fleury, to me, that was the sign of they're done with Mark Andre Fleury. I, I think the reason he went for nothing, or the AHL player, was because of the salary cap, not because of his actual value. I think he actually has value on a with one year left, but because of the flat cap, they're just who is going to take seven million dollars for he's thirty six or thirty seven. It's 36. 36 year old goalie. Yes, I, I understand he won the Vesna. It's just this unfortunate, stupid salary cap reality. Want to hear rants about that? Go back to last episode. Um, but those are my thoughts on the trade and the <laughs> thing that went ensued. What's funny is the teams who would probably take that cap hit are probably on his protection list. <laughs> yeah, probably. AKA Western Canada. Because <laughs> boy, the Oilers need a goalie. Uh, yeah, I, I, yeah, the value stuff, you took the words out right out of my mouth there, that's about it. Now, when the organization tell Marc-Andre Fleury and his wife that he was going to retire there, now, trading Nate Schmidt, uh, the possibility of Patrick um, there, there, there have been those whispers that, that their reputation of that organization in signing there was going to start taking a hit. And what I think is really going to solidify that for a lot of players now is the fact that you have just gone and literally stabbed in the back a future Hall of Famer. 
the guy who you're in the lottery your first year, if not for Mark Andre Fleury. Yes, he was he was hurt, and some guy stepped in. But if you look at when he did play, how he, if he was healthy that entire year, he was going to win the Vesna. Yeah. Not to mention how amazing there were talks. If you guys remember when he was going to the finals, there there were talks. Even if Vegas had lost, he could have won the Collins fight. Paul Jaguar. Yeah, he was that good. And it's it is, and we have had discussions about the business side of things. And you can pull this off with a fourth liner, and no one will blink an eye at it. It's not the first time we've heard about players finding out, but to do it to Mark Andre Fleury, who is 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 unanimously a beloved teammate and so respected throughout the National Hockey League, like like one of the best friends of Sidney Crosby, that's going to kill your reputation. That's not something Vegas want to do. You know, I, I wonder, I go back to Alan Walsh's tweet with the photo last year, and I know it said Pete DeBoer on it, but you know, I, I have to wonder if he, Pete DeBoer is the wrong guy to necessarily blame here. Um, go, looking at this situation, because we all, you, you know, you know, look at what happened this year when he switched from Leonard, uh, from Flurry to Leonard, the whole debate came up of DeBoer's handling of goalies right in terms of he's more than happy to switch and if that was my understanding i wonder if it was more towards management than it was towards the coach because the, it was the management who extended leonard it was the management who brought in robin leonard it wasn't pete DeBoer. i like when you have robin leonard and mark andre fleury these are two top goalies in the nhl you, you have to play one of them, right? And you have to play the one who is hot and you can make the decision then. But you have two of the two top goalies in your organization at the same time. So I just, it's hard for me to look back and say it was Pete DeBoer. I have more of a feeling that maybe that was more hinted towards Kelly McCrimmon and George McPhee. Yeah. Say- yeah, go on out. No, no, it's just uh, I'll no, go go ahead, Daniel. I'll go. I'll go after. I'll go after. I kind of feel the same way too. It was what we've said before, where when it comes to these decisions, it is a failure on the management side of things. That you know, Pete DeBoer again, he had to play who was hot, and it it didn't make sense for the way Flurry was getting older for him to still play 60, 70 games all the time. And the thing is, I don't know. It's just it's this thing I've talked about before. It's like that hyper competitive that Vegas has with themselves and the market where they're like, we don't want to be like any other expansion team. So by any means necessary, even if it means deteriorating our reputation for the future with potential players wanting to play here, we got to do whatever it takes to, you know, stay under the hard cap and win at all costs. Like, or, you know, at least field a competitive team because, you know, in a market like Vegas, maybe things are going to dwindle down when all this hype from the expansion and the way they've been able to compete right away, like tapers off. I'll say this. I, I think there still needs to be, I, I feel like there needs to be three swords in this back. Uh, Cause at the end of the day, um, a management, obviously management wanted him out the net. We all know that mm-hmm. yeah. it was just, it took Flurry not playing well to do that. DeBoer makes those decisions. Um, sure, and it's sure. been in his history of his New Jersey days, apparently. Um, and, uh, now, I can't remember exactly, but there was a discussion I remember that somebody told Flurry he would get the nod in the playoffs, and he didn't. I remember who that was. I still think there is blame on DeBoer for that. Sure. Um, but there is for sure two more blades in there for McCrimmon. And, and, um, and why do I, why do I always forget McPhee? McPhee, McPhee, McPhee. Uh, I, I think there have to be a couple swords in there. There's a few fatal. You know when you guys haven't seen Game of Thrones, have you? No. Ah, never mind. It's for 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 the watch is all I'll say for anyone who's watched Thrones out there. For for the watch, Jon Snow, rest in peace. Well, he came back, but whatever. Um, what? Spoiler alert! Yeah, it was, it was the whole thing. Do you know Kit Harrington told a police officer um, that he was living in the show because he got pulled over because he was speeding too much? He told it on um, Jimmy Fallon, I think. Kimmel, one of them. They're both the one same. Of, one of the Jimmies. One of the one of the Jimmies. Jimothy, Jimothy Lilligan, <laughs> make the team or, you know, get traded. Anyway, yeah, get some centermen. Unless like the plane is Nolan Patrick. Wish him in the best, but that's such a weird team. 